You are watching Sammy, the Interviewing Toucan, brought to you by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Michael Hamoya and Shane Gibson, authors of the beautiful book, Wake Up Woods. Wake Up Woods is a project of the Indiana Native Plant Society and combines accurate illustrations of desirable native plants with lilting verses and scientific explanations. There is something for everybody in this book. As a matter of fact, the Indiana Center for the Book liked it so much that they chose it for the book to represent Indiana at the 2020 National Book Festival. So let's dive right in. Shane, we're going to start with you. Can you each tell us about yourself and your connection to Indiana? Yeah, um, I was born and raised in Elwood, Indiana. Um, I've lived in Indiana my whole life. At a very young age, my dad immersed me in nature, uh, hunting, fishing, uh, looking for artifacts and plowed fields, looking for morels, and that immersion in nature just uh, fostered a love of the outdoors, um, and then later in life I began writing, and uh, those two loves merged together. That's so great. Actually, quick follow-up. Tell us, what is a morel? Uh, that is a, a, a mushroom. And it's, an pretty, mushroom. it's pretty tasty, right? It is, and you can learn a little bit about it in the book. Oh, an right. illustration in the book of a morel. And the other thing I just wanted to follow up on is Elwood, where they used to have the Glass Festival? That is the Glass Festival. Uh, was in Elwood, Indiana, yes. And is that over now, maybe? I I'm not sure. Okay. I I'm not connected there um, as I used to be, but... Uh, well, if uh, it's not, maybe they'll bring it back, because that was so great. Yeah, I always tell folks the home of Red Gold Tomatoes and Windowell Wilkie. So. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, Michael, how about you? Tell us about yourself and your connection to Indiana. Uh, well, I'm not a born and raised Hoosier, but I've been here over 37 years, so consider myself a Hoosier. I grew up in a small town of less than 2,000 people in far southern Indiana and uh, developed an interest just as a kid might do, uh, throwing stones and going fishing and so forth, but uh, not really a, a serious fascination with nature per se. I uh, ultimately went to, uh, developed an interest and went to Southern Illinois University in Carbondale and got a, a bachelor's and master's degree in botany because by that time I became very interested in plants. I uh, then met my lovely wife and we went traveling, so to speak, I went to live on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and taught science to uh, Lakota Sioux children for two years. Then I went she and I went to the mountains of North Carolina, where I also taught at a community college. And then 37-some uh, years ago, we went to uh, here in Indiana and became I became botanist and plant ecologist with the Indiana, da Natural, Indiana Department of Natural Resources. Wow, that's really amazing. Um, I... I've never really met anyone who has taught. Tell us a little bit more about, did you say you taught, was it at the L L Lakota and Sioux? Lakota Sioux, yes. Uh, this is in far southwest South Dakota. It's near the Badlands and the Black Hills. And, That's so uh, interesting. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. We really loved it there. Sounds like it. So, Michael, we'll just stay with you for a second. What was your contribution to Wake Up Woods, and how is this similar or different to the work that you normally do as a botanist? Uh, first, I'll ask, answer your second question first. I uh, have been botanist and ecologist there and did a lot of work with plants, wild plants, uh, doing inventories of natural areas that might uh, hopefully become protected as nature preserves. Uh, I wrote about plants, I studied them, inventoried and monitored them. And so uh, actually what I did for this book was write the, the scientific information, so to speak, about mostly the life history and ecology of the plants, interesting things that, uh, about the interactions of the plants with certain pollinators and, and various other animals. And so uh, it, it was really very similar to the work that I do and did do. I'm now retired. Oh, well, congratulations. That's great. 
Thank you. Shane, how about you? What did you do on the book? Um, I wrote the, the verses or the poetry for the book. Um, and so that was my contribution. And, and the book um, itself was based on a poem that I had written eight or nine years ago and had originally four verses. And then we had to complete another eight or nine more um, to make the book complete. Cool. And are you a poet by trade? Well, well I wouldn't say by trade, but um, I started writing poetry my senior year of high school, and that um, continued and, and, and kind of flourished when I became an elementary teacher and was teaching, writer, teaching writers workshop and, and encouraging young, young people to write, and I would write alongside with them. And that continued in my teaching profession, but also in my private life as well. That's so great. I love encouraging young people to read and to write. I think that writing in young people can just be such an amazing experience. That's so great. Um, so Michael, you're a botanist. Can you tell the viewers what area of the country does Wake Up Woods cover in terms of all the native plants that are depicted in the book? Well, uh, they were actually very carefully selected. We wanted to make certain that they not only occurred in Indiana, but a much greater area of, uh, of occurrence so that there would be, uh, this book would be of, of interest to people farther away than, than the Midwest. So you could include all of the Midwest and all basically the Northeastern quarter of the United States and South uh, Eastern corner of Canada would apply. So these plants are wide ranging and fairly common and ones that uh, people could see when they take a, a hike out into the into their favorite natural area or forest. That's great. You, you've touched on this a little bit, but can you tell us how the plants were chosen and maybe which which plant in the book is your favorite? Well, as, as you know, the title is Wake Up Woods, and these are plants that are the very earliest blooming ones in the forest, and they actually come out even before the leaves come out on the trees. So as this is all happening, it's kind of the wakening of the forest, hence wake up woods. And my favorite plant in the book, and you know, there, there are so many, I think, what is, whichever one I'm happen, happening to look at at the moment when I'm out in the woods is my favorite one. But if I had to choose. You have I to recall, choose. I recall, I recall a time, uh, seeing in a floodplain forest a, a just a huge massive expanse of bluebells virginia bluebells and to me it was like seeing a piece of the sky that had come down to the ground and it was very airy uh, it was just a solid blue and i almost felt like like how perhaps a weightlessness might feel or how a bird might feel flying in the sky it was it was a very special experience, and uh, so I'd have to pick that one. Well, I have to say, uh, being a bird, I know that feeling of flying through the sky, and <laughs> it really is quite amazing. And Shane, <laughs> being a poet, I'm sure that you can appreciate some of Michael's language that he was just using there. Um, and also, Shane... very poetic. Yes, it was, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> sure. So there is a really long tradition of writing poetry about nature. Shane, can you talk a little bit about maybe the challenges in writing a poem about a specific plant? Or were there, was it really just all about opportunities? Well, I find writing oftentimes, uh, you know, the first four verses that I wrote of this book, you know, again, eight or nine years ago, they probably happened maybe within 30 seconds after an experience in nature in the, in the early spring. And there was just something that clicked it happened it and they all made sense they just and they came out as in and, and those verses are all in the in the book uh the others eight verses that we had to add that's a you know it's a different challenge when you've got to make something up when it when it just doesn't happen naturally you've got to you know it's it's more of a labor to spend time working and those verses went through multiple versions the original verses those those were, again, those were done in 30 seconds and they never changed. Uh, the others, we really had to work on them and, and fine tune them and edit them and, and try, try different, different formats for the different plants. 
You know, this book is really special because it was a huge collaborative effort, you know. I also want to mention Jillian Harris's um, beautiful illustrations that are in the book. What was it like writing a picture book with, you know, three different contributions, plus you had the publisher, plus you had the Native Plant Society. Shane, do you want to tackle that? Yeah, I will say, uh, you know, Jillian and I worked um, really close together as we looked at those additional plants that we were adding to the list. And actually, Michael, too, because I was looking for unique things about the plant to help write the verses. And Jillian has a great uh, natural history background, botany background. And so she was she knew more about these interactions between insects and plants than I did. And so I would ask her, which ones are you featuring in your artwork? And I would that that would help guide me of maybe a way to look at information I would put in the verse or, you know, little lines or something quirky about that plant relationship that I, uh, animal relationship that I could look for. So I, I was relying on what Michael had written, what Jillian was painting to try to formulate these new verses. And Shane, it sounds like you've got something wild in your background. Is that a child uh, by any chance? <laughs> uh, that's, that's the chickens. Oh, well, <laughs> not so wild. <laughs> so Michael, how about you? How was it to do a picture book in a collaborative way? Have you done picture books before, either of you? I no, I have not. Not at least in terms of, uh, of uh, paintings and illustrations. I did have the good fortune to, to write a couple of books about plants. One about the wild and native orchids of Indiana, as well as a field guide to, to forest plants. But never anything quite like this. But I was thrilled to be involved with it because uh, not only did I get to work with a bunch of wonderful people, but uh, just to know uh, who the, the targeted audience was and what impact it could make on, on, on them and the reader and, the, and especially the children and, and hopefully to, to develop and inspire a great strong interest in, in nature and of course plants being a botanist that that's uh, that's always good but yeah, it it uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Well, let's talk about the audience. Clearly, this is a picture book. I've talked before in other interviews about the power of picture books. Picture books, I think, are almost like little miracles. You know, they're really for all sorts of audiences. They reach young children. They reach parents because clearly the parents are going to be reading to the children. They reach older children too, and also just grown-ups in general. So I just really find picture books to to be magical. But can you guys talk a little bit about maybe the importance of children getting out in nature? I know Shane, you talked about your early experiences. Is. Um, I don't know, just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I can talk about um, both the utilization of picture books in connecting people to nature and what I do with my current position as education director for Sycamore Land Trust um, and reaching thousands of participants a year. Um, in many of those programs, I'm utilizing picture books. And so my cl elementary classroom experience uh, really turned me on to the use of picture books in the classroom. I, I loved it. So I whenever I'd write these poems, I would say, oh man, this would make a good picture book. And well, I would never get it accomplished. And my wife would say, would you just do it? Would you make a picture book? <laughs> and so with the Indiana Native Plant Society being the driving force, they really gave me an opportunity that I had been thinking about a, for a long time of taking one of my poems and making it into a picture book. Um, but I utilize these picture books um, very similar to Wake Up Woods, all the time in classrooms as jumping off points, as introductions, as support to nature lessons. Uh, I would say more times than not, I'm utilizing picture books for my nature-based lessons in, in classrooms. And it is really essential for children to get out into nature, right? So that they feel like it's theirs and they want to protect it. And it's also just plain old healthy, isn't it? Well, I think, yeah, I think both of those things are key. And, and again, from my position at Sycamore Land Trust, they, they started this position as a, with an education director for the idea that in connecting people to nature, we are um, fostering the next generation of conservationists, the people to love and care for the land. Um, and so uh, I think books like this and just the work that Michael has done and what I do helps connect those people and, and open their eyes to a um, 
you know, the wonderful outdoors. Michael, do you have anything you want to add about getting kids out into nature? I uh, really only thing to add is get them out there. That's 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 the main thing. We can we can talk about it, and uh, and uh, let them watch nature on TV. But you really have to get them out outdoors and in the field and and uh, and make it fun. Uh, they don't have to be scientists. Sure. <laughs> just, just let them get out and really enjoy and, and, and hopefully come to appreciate and care for it. That's so great. I love that. Well, um, my last question, do you guys know, can you give me any inside information? Is there going to be a sequel, like a Good Night Woods or anything yeah. like that? If there was, would you do it? Well, I would definitely do it. And there has been a lot of, a lot of folks have asked that question. Um, I think the product that, that has been produced with Wake Up Woods, um, again, having utilized hundreds of picture books in my lifetime, the quality of this book is as good as any of I, that I've seen. It far surpassed my expectation. Oh, it's and, a beautiful book. It's, it's you, just really great. And you mentioned the audience. You know, I think we started off with an audience here, like, well, this is our elementary age, but honestly, the audience, it's, it's kind of never ending because there's such great information and detailed information. I still haven't learned everything that I know I'm going to learn from this book because I need, I know I need to go back and read something Michael said or a bug that Jillian has drawn that um, hasn't cemented in my mind yet. So we, I think we all hope that there could be um, some more to come. What about you, Michael? I certainly echo what, what Shane just said. I, I would be uh, thrilled to, to do additional well, versions of this book. Absolutely. And if, if they do make another one, you can bet that this toucan's going to talk about it. By the way, Michael, <laughs> um, toucans are not native to Indiana. Is that right? Uh, no, they sure aren't. <laughs> but, but I'm a Hoosier anyway. I am. Because I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, guys, this has been so great. And I really encourage everyone in Indiana and all of our neighboring states to pick up Wake Up Woods and to get out there in nature. So this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long, everybody. See you, Sammy. See you, Shane. Thank you. See ya. Bye.